What's going to happen in the future? Is my income solid? Is my job solid? What if things go south? Welcome back to the channel. Thank you for being here. If you've not yet subscribed, please consider doing so now. If you like the video, uh, give it a thumbs up. I'm Alan Warren, the RV wingman with Wingman Wisdom. Uh, stories from my perspective that hopefully will encourage you to think and to expand your horizons in hopes that you will be able to make more informed and better decisions, whatever decisions you happen to make. Today I want to talk about a couple of things, um, and, and one of them is uh, that I contend that most of us don't know what we want. We think we know what we want, but a lot of times we get what we want. That's not really what we want, but it's not until later. But people that want what they want, and they want it right now, is often a recipe for disaster. I also want to know, how do you unsee something? If you can help me by telling me how you can unsee something that you have seen, please help me out. Drop a comment below and let me know, because once I see something, I kind of I can't unsee it. I'll give you an example, a couple of examples, and then I'm going to wrap it up by going back to uh, you know knowing what you really want, not just today, but in the future. As you may or may not know, for almost 40 years, I did TV fishing and hunting programs, traveled all over, went to some unbelievable places, traveled the world. Uh, there was a place that I went up in the northern half of the country, I'm not going to name it, but it, oh, famous, famous place, a hunting preserve with gigantic deer. I mean, a beautiful facility, everything that, that you would, if you were a hunter, you could not have a more beautiful location, more beautiful lodge, more beautiful everything with these giant deer. It's just, just a perfect environment. So I was invited to go there to do a TV show, of course. And when I went there, there was this guy, and he's an older guy. He's probably 78 years old and uh, couldn't move around very much, but had lots of money, lots of money. And mwah, 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 they were kissing his you-know-what. And uh, he wanted to shoot a big deer. It had to score X amount of inches. Now, a score is measured with it literally a tape measure that you measure the points and the circumference of the bases and all these different things adds up to a what they call a Boone and Crockett score. All this man wanted was a deer that scored a certain amount. And this hunting preserve certainly had those deer. And so his son was there. And his son was, I don't know, 45, maybe 50 years old at the most. And uh, the son was talking with the guy that ran the hunting preserve. And the, the guy that ran the preserve was like, I don't know if your dad can move around or not. I mean, you know, and he says, well, we, we don't care how he gets it. He just wants to shoot something that's this big. And I'm over here in this conversation. And it ended up going, and, the, and the, the guy that has the preserve is like, well, so what's the bottom line? He says, look, my dad would shoot a buck that scored that if it was in this garage. And when I heard that, I went, my God. Are you kidding me? That's what it's about? For this rich man that I don't know how he made his money, I don't know anything about him except his values are only in the score and, and what he wouldn't care about the, the challenge, the chase, the anything. Was the son right? Was the father right? Am I right? It just rubbed me wrong. So from that moment on, every time I saw somebody that was getting up in years, that had money, that went to these hunting places, I'm like, they're being played. They're, they're, they're being uh, told that they're Daniel Boone and we're gonna, oh, you're the luckiest guy that ever was. Now I'm not, I promise you, I'm not throwing rocks at hunting preserves. Uh, I believe in capitalism. I had a hunting ranch. I think that they serve a need, they do. I'm just past that. Doesn't make me better than that. It just, I can't unsee. I cannot unsee what I saw in that garage at that hunting preserve. Real quickly, I had a hunting ranch in Texas and ran a hunting operation, but I had to work really hard for this hunting ranch just to, to, to purchase it, took everything I had, every ounce of, of sweat and energy and every dime I had to make it work, and I did. I was able to, it helped me a lot in my life. The work was good for me, I enjoyed doing it, I loved meeting the people, but I had to face the reality. I didn't have the big deer that a lot of these preserves have. 
I don't have a trust fund. I don't have any oil money and a family that's going to go, hey, you know, Alan can just play for a while and just, you know, so what if we lose money? I couldn't lose any money. And I had to have a lot of customers. How do you compete against these places that have all these big giant amenities and wildlife coming out their wazoo? And I've just got these little bitty deer in Texas and me. Here's how I did it. We had what was called uh, exotics. These are animals that are non-native animals from around the world that they, they thrive in Texas. But most of my hunters came to shoot, they thought, to shoot a whitetail, going back to getting what you want. So they want to shoot a whitetail deer, a great big whitetail deer. And they, they have no interest, zero interest in the exotics. But I know the truth, and the truth is we have some, but not very many. I mean, it's not like, give them a big one. Come on, next. It ain't that. But how do you get people to love your ranch when you have little bitty deer? How do you do that? They want a big deer. That's what they think. And so when the people met me, I would say, welcome, blah, blah, blah. They'd look around. They'd see all these different deer. Some were big, some were small. And I would say, I got good news and bad news. One, we got a lot of deer. The good news is you're going to all see a bunch of deer, and one of you is going to shoot a really nice one. Odds are really, one of you, 10 people, is going to shoot a really big deer. Uh, but you're all going to see some deer. And they're like, huh? I, you know, I wanted, everybody wants to guarantee. But here's the good news. We have these exotics, and I know you're not interested in them, but if you want to change, if you see something that you go, oh, well, what the heck is that? Well, that's an Axis deer from India. Or that, what a black buck antelope. You see something that you go, wow, that's an interesting, beautiful animal. I would love to hunt for that instead of the deer. You can do that if you want. I know you don't want to. You're looking for Mr. Big. I get it. But if you choose to shoot something else, I'm okay with that. But I want you to be happy with it. Long story short, people, most people ended up shooting one of the exotics. But they didn't come there to shoot the exotic. They came there to shoot this white-tailed deer over here. Now they end up shooting this fallow buck over here. And guess what? They came back. My hunters came back and they brought people with them. They brought their coworkers and their families. They brought people with them in spite of my little deer because they had options. I didn't sell them, yeah, come on down to Texas. You're going to shoot a great big buck. I didn't do that because it would have been a lie. But I did say, we're going to give you a good time. That's what people want. They want to have a good time. They want to feel good. Not just the moment they pull the trigger at a deer in a frigging garage. I think most people want to feel good when they look back at the memory and go, that was, that was a fun thing. It doesn't have to be about hunting and killing animals. It could be climbing a mountain or playing golf and doing. It can be a, about a lot of different things. I just use these illustrations because they're stories that, that – uh, you know, I reflect on and they help change my perspective. Going back to how do you unsee something? I don't know. I haven't shot a deer, haven't wanted to shoot a deer or any kind of an animal in a decade. I just, I don't care if it's the biggest thing that ever was. It says, come and shoot me. You're going to be on the front cover of whatever. It doesn't matter to me, but that doesn't make me right. It doesn't mean that everybody ought to be like me. Life, hunting, anything that is worthwhile and meaningful is, is a journey. And you will go through phases in that journey. Phases of RV ownership. You'll go from the excitement, you don't know anything at all, to the excitement phase, to the, oh my gosh, there's a lot of stuff to fix in this phase, to I didn't know I could fix all this. There's lots of different phases through life. And none of them are the right phase. They're the right face for you or for me when we're in it. But trust me, as I say, this too shall pass. I hope that this story, the story of going to the hunting place with a old rich man wanted to shoot a deer, it didn't matter about the story. He just wants something to, I guess, brag to his friends about. And the story about how I just told the truth and gave people options and took care of them and did the best I could and built a pretty good business and ended up allowing me to have a pretty nice campground in Texas. But how do you unsee something? And how do you know what you want? Is it something you want right now? 
Is it something that you're going to look back on? You're going to go, man, we should have never bought that. How do you know what you want? I think it starts out by taking a deep breath and going, wait a minute. I mean, if it's an expensive thing, if it's a, a trip or an RV or a truck, you probably ought to go, wait a minute. What's going to happen in the future? Is my income solid? Is my job solid? What if things go south? You have to take a deep breath and be honest with yourself. And finally, you have to be responsible for whatever decision you decide to do. I think in my next video, I'm going to tell you about me being a coward and uh, when I stopped being a coward and how it cost me money. But God, I felt good doing it. Thank you so much for watching. Let me know what you think. How do you unsee something, everybody? Let me know. Post a comment down below. I'm Alan Warren, the RV Wingman. Be safe, have fun, play nice, and don't leave your good manners at home. I'll see you again soon.